How's it going everybody, this is Travis Plot Reviews, and today we're going to be taking a look at my 10 favorite albums of 2019. Now there's a few rules about an album making this list. One, it has to be a full length studio album. So no EPs and no mixtapes. Two, it has to be on a streaming service such as Spotify and Apple Music. I primarily use Spotify, so if it's not on there, it's probably going to hurt the chance of the album making the list. And three, only one album per artist. Also, these are going to be very short reviews of each album. If you'd want to see me do a full length album review of any of the albums listed, go ahead and comment that below. Alright, and before we hop into the top 10, here are a few honorable mentions. This album is an experience, with many emotions being scattered throughout, such as anger in songs such as I'll bury the hatchet when they bury you, sadness in songs such as there's no answer, and a push to crawl out from the bottomless hole you may be in, such as in We'll Always Have Paris, which is one of my favorite songs of the year. This band has developed such a tight mix of post-hardcore, pop-punk, and alternative rock, and it is so pleasing to my ears. This album is an emotional roller coaster, and the song is meant for any occasion, and I personally believe this is the band's best work to date, and the sky is the limit for this band. Nashville, Tennessee's The Persuaded is a trio of young, talented metalcore musicians, and this album is one of the many debuts on this list. Songs such as Force Silence, To My Brothers, and Lost Souls have a very high-energy, aggressive sound that fans of bands such as Fit for a King, For Today, and Early Wage War would love. But more melodic rock songs, such as Wolves, Unashamed, featuring Kevin Young of Disciple, and Betrayal appeal to wider audiences and display the versatility of the band. This has been one of my favorite albums to come out of the new record label, Rockfest Records, and seeing them twice on this album cycle proved to me that this band has what it takes to make it big. Also, fun fact, The Persuaded was the last band that I got to see live before quarantine started. One Hundred Gex is an artist I never thought I would get into, and in 2018 a friend sent me a song by them and I didn't really care for it. But after the release of Money Machine, I fell in love with the project. The hyper-pop duo really created something special, ironically or not. This is the music for internet culture, and it is catchy hook after catchy hook. Songs such as Stupid Horse, 745 Sticky, and The Hand Crushed by a Mallet are constantly stuck in my head. Dylan Brady and Laura Less are masters of songwriting and are expanding the definition of music, taking influence from anti-pop, noise pop, emo rap, and old school EDM. This music appeals so heavily to meme culture. Just look at the beginning on Money Machine which is also their biggest song. Although there are so many hyper video game soundtrack inspired moments, such as I Would Never Stop, there are also sad and wholesome moments such as Gek To You and Ringtone. This project had to grow on me altogether though, as I didn't like them at first. The thing that brought me back to the project altogether was people commenting the beginning of Money Machine on Facebook comment sections. And I'm so glad that I came back to the project. 100 Gex is not for everyone but it grows on you and eventually you will be singing along to the absurd lyrics. Sleep Token focuses on a mix of haunting, gloomy metal and clean pop influenced electronics. It's really hard to explain this band, and the easiest thing to do is to recommend you just to check them out. This album has a 54 minute runtime, which is a lot, but give it a listen, you won't regret it. The Night Does Not Belong to God, the opening track, is easily one of my favorite tracks of the year. Bloodsport is a tearjerker of a closing track, and the vocal layering in the chorus is crazy. Dark Signs is a lot of pop rock influence and it works so well. The percussion on this album is incredible, and it is definitely a strong point on the entire album. Pop influenced songs such as Give, Say That You Will, and Levitate display the powerful vocals throughout. One thing that I personally love about this album is the contrast of this angelic voice with the dark, gloomy, and intense instrumentals in tracks such as Gods, The Offering, and Sugar. This album has perfected the art of build-up and payoff, as the songs build up for three minutes just to explode, and it is wonderful to hear. This band came on my radar at the release of the album, and I knew from first listen that this was a special album, and the musicianship throughout is so well done, and it sets a tone so perfectly. I've been following this UK metalcore band for about 4 years now, and I keep telling myself that it's a matter of time before they blow up. 
and this album, Low, really confirms that. This band has the total package, aggressive uncleans, very catchy choruses that soar vocally, interesting instrumentation and heavy breakdowns. Veins, the first single, displays everything that is great about this band. Stadium rock influenced cleans, powerful vocal layering from both vocalists, an intense breakdown, and a sense of uniqueness currently missing in a lot of metalcore as of recent. Many bands have tried to develop radio-friendly style by diluting the heavy elements when a band can be heavy and still have wide appeal, and bands such as Ice Nine Kills, Dance Gavin Dance, and The City Is Ours display this perfectly. Casket, Bare Bones, and If You Know You Know are heavy tracks that have a lot of groove as well as having that heavy element that we know and love from metalcore. This album has a lot of slow and more rock influenced moments such as Now That You're Gone and Here It All. It's a matter of time before bands such as Fit For A King, Wage War, or Wolves At The Gate bring these guys on tour, so it's best that you listen to them now. The most popular artist on my list, Aries is an artist that takes influence from pop, rap, R&B, emo rap, and more. Welcome Home is his debut release and it is full of bombastic and charismatic anthems. Bad news, the opener has a lot of clever lyrics and a very aesthetically pleasing music video, self-made by the artist. Racecar has a sing-along chorus about hating your day job and the dream of success, and the song builds up to that final chorus so well. Amy's Grave is my favorite track on the album. It shows most vividly the contrast in instrumental and vocal delivery, which is an upbeat, bright, and summer vibe pop rap sound, and the lyrics, which are primarily pessimistic and down. This contrast is a mood for many different tracks, and it really sets Aries apart from other artists in his scene. This album, despite the lyrics, is still a lot of fun, and I have so many fond memories of playing this album on loop with my roommates and singing along to a lot of the different songs. Bill Murray, the brainchild of Johnny Frank, is a project that released two albums in 2019, and both are very, very good. But due to the one album for artist rule, I had to pick one, and Wet Milk is just slightly more enjoyable for me. Bill Murray is a project that combines elements of post-hardcore alternative rock and influences from pop, pop rock, and pop punk. With a 20 minute runtime and only 7 songs, this album is very accessible, and every song is memorable in its own way. Songs such as Life Is Good, My Feelings Have Feelings, and My Top 10 Most Brutal Breakdowns of 2047 are the most aggressive songs on the album. Despite a lot of the album having a lot of pop influence, which is a change of pace for Bill Murray that I personally really like. Songs like Holy Crud and Spaces Between Letters Are Cool are very catchy rock songs. This shows a lot of versatility for one of the most unique projects in all of music, and the public is finally starting to notice Johnny's new project much more after the release of this album. And now Bill Murray is getting the same amount of monthly listeners as his former band Attack Attack. And My Feelings Have Feelings is quickly becoming his most popular song. And with a feature on Dance Gavin Dance's new album, expect Bill Murray to get even bigger. I've been a fan of Heart Attack Man for over three years now, and The Manson Family was one of my favorite albums of 2017. And there was a lot of hype coming into their new album. Heart Attack Man's interesting marketing techniques gained a lot of hype from major music websites, and the claims of the album being too violent for certain websites was very intriguing. This album is the exact opposite of The Manson Family, but in the best way possible. The aggression, hostility, and overall anger displayed has been bottled up by vocalist and primary songwriter Eric for too long, and it is erupting on this album. Songs such as Asking For It, Blood Blister, and Sugar Coated very bluntly speak of the hatred towards people formerly in Eric's life. The fan favorite Cut My Losses tells the story of a former person in Eric's life gaslighting him, and it has become an anthem by Hammy fans to step away from toxic relationships. This album is significantly heavier than anything Heart Attack Man has ever released and it definitely shows the influence of the punk and hardcore scene. Look at songs such as Crisis Actor, Sugar Coated, and Out For Blood. They are big examples for this. Lyrically, this album holds nothing back against toxic behavior and toxic people in the lives of the band. And this is honestly something missing in the music world where everything feels so safe. It's the exact opposite of the current scene and that is what is so appealing about this album.
Speaking of bands separating from their scene, Rarity is a band that has been slowly disassociating from their pop punk roots for a more post hardcore and alternative rock sound and showing influence by bands such as Capstan and Can't Swim. And this is the perfect sound for a band like Rarity. The aggressive tendencies in their previous releases have always been my favorite parts of them. So seeing them embrace these elements on an entire album is great to see. I'll Come Around, the first single, may still be my favorite track on the album. As the chorus roars and lyrically the hooks are so memorable to me. Lyrically, this album is very dark. Tackling loss and the feelings of being inferior, mental health struggles and more. Songs such as You Must, Heal and A Numbness show this new direction very well for the band. The alternative rock song I Woke Up Alone is very strong. It's a power ballad that has some of the darkest lyrics on the album. It gives the feeling of screaming the lyrics from your bedroom in a search for someone to understand how you're feeling. And the relatability of this album is very important. Just look at Frantic Hands. Very much about struggling with anxiety in the process of an anxiety attack. It's graphic, but it does a great job depicting the struggle many people have. Hurting is one of my favorite songs on the album. It has a grungy pop-punk feel about continuously going through the same struggles and being in the same place every time. Tiger Lily is an excellent closer, a piano ballad singing about the desire of having someone around, because having someone around makes the writer happy, and loneliness causes the negative feelings to come back. The vocal layering in the chorus is haunting, and it sends chills down your spine. And you truly feel what the band members are feeling, and you can connect with it so easily. And to me, that's what makes an album great. Carousel Kings have shown many different influences in their fourth studio album, Plus Ultra. Many songs are inspired by pop rock, pop, and even rap in some places, such as the title track and Truth Seekers. This band has catchy hooks down to a science, and the band displays so many new risks. There are many features throughout, including Spencer Charnas of Ice Nine Kills and Shellshock, and Rory Rodriguez of Dayseeker and Great White Buffalo. The first single, Codebreaker, has one of the best vocal performances in any song released by the band. And the guitar work on this album by Will Berovic is excellent throughout, especially on the solo of the second single, Lock Me Out. Tracks such as Move Slow and Ghost are some of my personal favorites. Having a very nice bass and rhythm guitar work, and the vocals in Ghost are especially well done. This album is no stranger to slowing it down. Shelter is a very wholesome love song and it makes me want to fall in love all over again. Great White Buffalo tackles the loss of someone you love and the regrets and mistakes that you've made. This album is quite possibly Carousel King's most diverse and complete album, despite me having a very strong personal connection to the album Unity, which is probably my favorite Easycore album of all time. Plus Ultra welcomes a very new direction from the band and gives us a fun, enjoyable, and easy listen. This album shows emotions of helplessness, despair, and a broken man in one of the most beautifully crafted albums I've heard in a very long time. Corey Wells is an acoustic artist that has a powerful voice and you can hear the pain in his voice throughout the album. End of a Good Thing, the second single, talks about the mistakes of a former lover, which is a common topic on the album. The first single, Walk Away, is possibly my favorite song on the album. Feeling conflicted between loving someone and breaking up with them, telling them to leave and eventually you will find a way to hate that person, despite having so much love for them. This is also one of Corey's best vocal performances. The aggressive vocals are also seen in tracks such as Wildfire, a full band song talking about someone that may have tried to sabotage Corey's life. It is an anthem for disassociating from toxic people. Harbor is a truly heartbreaking song about Corey's child that passed away and the feeling of hopelessness that no one should have to deal with. This album is such a sad listen, but being able to connect and feel like you aren't alone in the things that you may be struggling with is such an important element and I connect with the way we are in a lot of ways, and personally connecting with the album has helped me a lot. Dayseeker is a band that has impressed me with every release they have had, but never to this regard. Sleep Talk has managed to set a mood so well. This is an album that you struggle to tell where one song begins and the other ends. It's so fluent. The metalcore aggression most known by Dayseeker takes a backseat to electronics and songs such as Burial Plot and Already Numb, but the dark elements of Dayseeker we know and love is still there. 
but it's in the lyrical content. This album is also Rory Rodriguez's best vocal performance by far. It is excellent throughout. Look at songs like Crooked Soul and Starting to Be Empty. Rory is the biggest draw of the band, and that isn't to devalue the instrumentation, Rory is just that good. Dayseeker are much more than just a generic post-hardcore band, and Sleep Talk shows that Dayseeker can break out of a generic scene and create something wonderful. The album gets heavy on tracks such as Gates of Ivory and The Color Black, but this heaviness is contained and used sparingly, which makes the heavy moments more special, and the closer Crash and Burn ends perfectly. This album is easily one of the best albums of the decade. It would easily have been number one if it wasn't for one album. What. An. Album. This album is an angsty album that was released right when I needed it, in March of 2019. A follow-up from a self-titled EP featuring five songs that would make it onto the album, this album is a mix of emo, punk, and pop-punk in the best way possible. With pessimistic and helpless lyrics, specifically in moody and lucid, this album is high energy, angry, and radiates the energy of a fight with someone you love. It really hurts. Worried tackles the regrets of decisions you are thinking of doing, the disinterest of who you see in the mirror. This album talks a lot about that and also feeling inferior in songs such as Moody and Blooms, which is a perfect album closer. Deadlocked was my most listened to song of 2019, and the aggressive verses in the melodic chorus really show off that display of inferiority and growing into the person you never wanted to be is very prominent in the song. Grinding Teeth, the most aggressive song, is an anthem for anyone that has gotten out of a relationship. No longer feeling needed by that person and noticing the one-way conversations that you have as the relationship diminishes. For anyone going through a difficult time, this album is for you. And it seems like with the way 2020 is going, everyone needs an album like this. So that's it, those are my favorite albums of 2019. If you'd like to see a full review of any of these albums, go ahead and comment it below. And thanks for watching.